Okay, hello everyone in a new video. In this one, we are going to solve an exercise related to mechanics in the chapters of mechanical actions and equilibrium of a body. This exercise was a previous one in the previous exams in 2019 third session, exercise number one. The title of this exercise is Solid on an Inclined Plane. The document one, uh huh, they mentioned document one, then now we can use it, represents a solid as that slides down on a smooth inclined plane, and hereby smooth they mean that the friction is neglected, so no friction. No friction between the inclined plane and the solid S. S is submitted to its weight vector W with magnitude W is equal to 3 newtons. And to the normal reaction N of the support. W is represented at the center of gravity G of S, take G is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram. Then here in document 1, we have the solid S on the inclined plane. W is represented, and the length of this vector is given by 1.5 cm, having the point of application G. G is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram. Now, knowing the weight and knowing the value of the gravitational field strength, we can directly determine the mass. Now, indicate for each of the following statements if it's true or false, and rewrite the false statements correctly. So here by indicate, we mean, it means that we need to state with the justification if the following statements are true or false. So any answer must be justified. Now let's start by number one. They are telling me that W is represented with a scale, one centimeter corresponds to one in Newton. So we need to check if this statement is true or false. So probably the wrong part or the, the wrong part is given by this scale. The length of the vector W is given by 1.5 centimeters. So what does 1.5 centimeter represent? The length of the vector W having a magnitude 3 newtons. Now this is the correspondence between the unit, uh, the length and the magnitude. But in this case, this correspondence or equivalence doesn't correspond to a scale because this is not given by 1 centimeter. Then dividing both sides by 1.5, Then each one centimeter in this case corresponds to two newtons. And as we can see that this statement is false because the correct scale according to this document and according to the given is given by one centimeter corresponds to two newtons. Then let's say that this statement is false. And the correct statement will be given by that W is represented with a scale in which each one centimeter corresponds to two newtons. Now a number two, they are telling me that the mass of S is 30 kilograms. So probably the wrong part in the statement is the value of the mass. Now let's calculate the mass and compare, compare it with the given one. We have the magnitude of the weight vector W, W is equal to three newtons, and we have the value of G then W is equal to M multiplied by G, constructing the triangle of this formula. Here, because we have multiplied, then W will be at the top, M, G, and M and G are at the bottom, we are interested in calculating the value of M. So putting our hand over M, M will be given by W divided by G. Now the value of W according to the given, it's given by three, and the value of G is given by 10. Plugging this fraction on the calculator, it will give me 0 0.3. Since both W and G are in the SI, so the value of M will be in the SI, which is kilograms. So now we get that the mass is given by 0 0.3 kilograms. Now comparing this value with the given one, we can notice that statement number two is false because the mass is equal to 0 0.3 kilograms. Then let's say that the answer is false. And the correct statement is given by the mass M of S is 0 0.3 kilograms. Now in number three, they are telling me the normal reaction N is vertically upward. So here they are giving me, so vertical corresponds for the line of action. 
whereas upward corresponds for the direction. Now, in order to know whether this statement is true or false, we need to determine the line of action and the direction of the normal reaction N. Knowing that the normal reaction is always perpendicular to the support, in this case, the support, this is the support, which is the inclined plane. Then, in order to do so, let's redraw the document 1 and represent on the solid as the normal reaction. Then, now we are in part 3. Then let's suppose that this is the inclined plane. On the inclined plane, we have the solid S. This is the center of gravity G of the solid S. And let's suppose that the point of contact between the inclined plane and the solid S is given by the point A. And because the normal reaction is classified as a contact force because it's not weight, it's not electric, and it's not magnetic. So the point of application of the normal reaction N will be the point of contact A. And it's perpendicular to the support like this. This is the normal reaction N. Now, after we have represented the normal reaction N without using a scale, we can see that the line of action of N is given by oblique, and the direction is upward to the left. Then, the correct statement will be the normal reaction N is oblique, upward to the left, and not vertical upward. So, let's say that this statement is false. So, the drawing here is the justification. And the correct statement will be given by the normal reaction. And is oblique. Upward. To the left. Now, in number four, statement number four is given by N is a force acting from a distance. And this statement is false because we know that the only three forces that are act at a distance, they are given by the weight, uh, the electric and the magnetic. And all other forces are classified as contact forces, in particular, the normal reaction. Then let's say false. N is a contact force. Now, in number 5, they are telling me in this case, W vector plus N vector is different from 0 vector. Okay, here, they are telling me that the solid S slides down. So, the solid S is not at rest. Not at rest. Okay, so the solid S is not at equilibrium, and we cannot say that W vector plus N vector is equal to 0 vector because the solid S is not at equilibrium. Then here, the justification... So this statement is true. Then let's say, since S is not at equilibrium, then W vector plus N vector is different than zero vector. So this statement is true. And let's rewrite it again. In this case, W vector plus N vector is different than 0 vector. And by this, we have finished solving this exercise. Hope it was beneficial for you guys out there watching it. And see you soon in another one.